Hey, everybody, it is Mike Young, better known as a digitalnomad.net. If you want to get to my YouTube channel and you're not sure where you're watching this, go over to a digitalnomad.net. Just type it into any browser, you go straight to my YouTube channel. So let's get straight to the point on this video. I've got some graphics behind me. We're talking about uh, inner tire wear, like basically a severe rear inner tire wear, and also the combination of that combined with front vibration under acceleration. This is specifically for Teslas. Uh, it could be for any car brand though. We're gonna go over all kinds of stuff in this video. It's very informative, I think. Uh, it's kind of ubiquitous across the entire automotive industry, what's going on with this thing with Tesla. Wh whether it's a problem or not, I don't know. Uh, you can decide that. Let me know down below in the comments as you watch this video. So let's get started right away. First of all, this is mainly about Teslas, but not exclusively to Teslas. Most Teslas are designed in a very similar way. In fact, if you didn't know the difference, you may not even realize that there's multiple models of Teslas. Some models have Falcon wing doors, for instance. That's the Model X that I drive, and I've been driving it for over six and a half years. I've put about 250,000 miles on it. If you want to know more about my car, just go to a digitalnomad.net. Check out the videos. I got short videos. I got long videos. I got videos when I'm out in the car driving. I got all kinds of stuff going on. Constantly traveling, my wife and I, Denise. So check us out there. But let's talk about uh, rear inner tire wear. First of all, I got some graphics behind me. And I got these graphics from the Intuitive Company. And that is spelled with an N. N, the number two, I-T-I-V-E, Intuitive. All right. And Don is the guy over there. Hey, Don. He built some great products there for Teslas. And I felt the need to make this video after talking with somebody that was interested in some of the products that Don has recently and realizing that I've had the parts that Don manufactures over there at Intuitive for almost well, going on three years. It'll be three years this November that I've had the parts on my car. And I put about 100,000 miles on the car with these parts. So the car has almost 250,000. So I've got half the mileage on there with the Tesla factory stuff and half the mileage on there with Don's stuff. And actually I have some mileage on there with another company's parts. And I'll talk about that too. But the, uh, the long story short there is that not all aftermarket's parts companies are the same, as you may know. And a lot of these people build inferior quality parts, I'd say, for sure, inferior quality. And I had a very bad experience there. And I can say nothing but good stuff about Intuitive and Don's company. So if you need some aftermarket parts, he knows how to design and engineer these things and get them out to you. And they work as promised. And I have done all kinds of uh, stuff to my car. I'll, I'll reiterate this again later. But I put about 100,000 miles on these parts on the rear suspension. And I've been doing all kinds of long distance driving, off-road driving and towing heavy loads at capacity. So these things definitely perform well. All right, first of all, let's talk about your car, any car, and t Tesla makes Model Model S, which is the first uh, mass production car before after the Roadster. S, X, the SUV, S is the sedan, X is the SUV. Then there was Model 3, the, the midsize sedan, the smaller one, and then Model Y is the smaller SUV. Without none of these have Falcon wing doors except for Model X, if you want the shortcut. And of course, Cybertruck's coming out now. It looks totally different. And of course, you'll know what that is. But all the Teslas have the same kind of shape. They have the same kind of suspension system. I think most of them are based off of Mercedes. And one thing you also want to know is that S and X, um, for the most part, well, these the ones that are available now and in previous couple of years are all fully air suspension vehicles, which means that uh, in this area right here, uh, there are no traditional springs. This actually it looks to be an air strut to me. Now, on all Model 3 and Ys from the factory, in this area, you will find a coil spring wrapped around uh, this inner part. I don't even know. I'm so low tech in the way I'm describing it. But it's not. It's a fixed height suspension. That's the thing. The air suspension can move up and down. You can adjust it from inside. So that provides or presents a whole other set of circumstances with these Model S's and X's. So... For the inner rear tire wear, there's a couple things. First of all, we know that not all front and rear suspensions are set up the same in all vehicles. So like I have an old, older car, a model uh, year 2012 Lexus CT200, which is, believe it or not, the Toyota Prius driveline with the Toyota Matrix chassis and all 
of uh, Lexus's styling, all right? So the mechanicals are super reliable, but the rear the rear suspension is is, is different. In uh, that 2012 model year, I had an independent where the Prius had a like a beam axle across the back. And they had like a, in the back, it handles really well, good balance too. Instead of the tires going straight up and down, there's this thing called camber, okay? Camber, can if it's zero camber, it's straight up and down, directly up and down. If it's going to be um, negative, which we see on a lot of performance cars, basically the bottom of the tire is the bottom of my hand. It go, it bows out, so it's going to wear on the insides. Now, that's not that big of a deal. If you like that and you're a performance driver and you throw it in the corners, which I don't generally do. But if you're anybody that does, puts a lot of miles on your car, especially on the highway, and you're going straight most of the time and you're not driving aggressively, what that means is that your rear tires are going to start to wear unevenly. So this part or over here, this edge right here on the inside is going to wear down. So instead of it being uniform depth here, it's going to be really shallow, super shallow down to like the, you won't even see any tread lines there. And that's common in your Tesla. You may not believe me, but if you crawl down underneath your car, which is the only way you're going to know, get on your hands and knees under the car and look at this inner area right here, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. One of the reasons why it's very important to wear your tires, especially on a rear drive bias car, car which all Teslas are, they're kind of rear biased. Uh, the original Model S was only a rear drive vehicle. It wasn't even available in all wheel drive. And actually some of the earlier Model S's don't have air suspension too, like I was mentioning earlier. The new ones do, but that car has evolved. That Model S has evolved dramatically over time from when it was first introduced in 2012, even though it may look the same on the outside. So if you've got these tires in the rear that are gonna tend to wear on the inside because you've got a more performance minded car and there are no slow Teslas. I think we know this, okay? So Teslas are gonna be performance minded. They're gonna have that negative camber in the rear. So all you gotta do is what I did in my Lexus is every so often, you just rotate those ones in the back to the front. And actually what I ended up doing was I would only change two tires at a time instead of going changing four. I would let the ones wear on the front for maybe 60 or 70% of the lifespan then move them back, move them to the back <laughs> for the last 30% of their lifespan or 40% where I knew they were going to not be straight up and down to be like this to be wearing on the insides anyway. After a while, they start to, they don't even roll smoothly after a while of doing that. So uh, that's what I would do. So if you rotate them like that, then you're only changing out the rears as they wear out. And then you, uh, when you get new, new tires in the rear, you put those brand new ones on the front and you move them, the, the older ones in the front to the back to the rest of their lifespan. You, either way you're rotating, that's the, the, the lazy man's rotation schedule other people i see online on the tesla high mileage club which is at tesla high mileage club.com please join us there some people say they rotate their tires every seven thousand miles and that's great if you have most teslas because model s model 3 and model y all have the same size tires front and rear from the factory but model x has always had a staggered wheel design you know what that means that means that the tires up front are going to be thinner than the tires in the back, which are going to be thicker. So you cannot rotate them front to rear or crisscross them or whatever you're going to do. Don't do that. And actually, I never recommend crisscrossing anymore. Always keep them rotating in the same direction. However, Model X, which is what I have, presents a special set of circumstances because you cannot rotate these tires unless you go to a different tire size and wheel size that matches the fronts to the rears so that you can do that. And I don't recommend you do that. I know some people have done that. Comment below if you know somebody that's done that. Uh, but I haven't done it. I don't recommend you do that. It's actually a better handling vehicle, especially if it's rear drive, uh, rear biased. Uh, it's an SUV, so it's a little higher off the ground, a little higher. So it has a low center of gravity. All Teslas have a super low center of gravity, which is fantastic, by the way. Okay, great for handling and balance and everything, but you're going to... You're going to throw that car into some corners and it's going to wear those tires out. So anything you've got that's not perfectly uh, zero camber, it's a negative camber, it's going to start wearing on the inside. And that's what happens over here uh, on the back tire. So let's let's go with Model X. A uh, couple other things that are factors. Model 3 and Y have a fixed suspension. So they're just going to be very predictable. You're going to wear it in a certain way. It's going to be that way. Uh, and just rotate. And a lot of times I say most owners of threes and Ys have very predictable tire wear. 
okay, they didn't rotate their, tire, their tires. They know that, and they're willing to pay the price, all right? But if you rotate them on a regular basis, you're all good. You're going to get some really good mileage out of your tires. And let me know down below, by the way, if you're a three or a Y owner, what kind of mileage you can expect under normal driving uh, that you get out of your tires or under aggressive driving <laughs> or both. So for Model X, so I was going through tires, you know, the first 150,000 miles I had on the car, I could tell. The first set I was very gentle with, and I only had the 20, 20s at the time. Now I have 20s and 22s. And 22s seem to wear, um, they get even less road mileage on them before they need to be replaced. They wear very fast. So I started really noticing uh, what was going on in the rear, and I couldn't rotate them. Uh, one of the things you can do, which is what I do, is I increase the tire pressure in the rear. That does mean you're going to have a significantly rougher ride back there for one thing, okay? But if you have a, a negative camber situation, it will tend to make it less severe because when you ever, whenever you add more tire, and I don't, uh, more tire, more air to your tires, and I don't mean above the manufacturer's recommended pressure when cold and not driving and not sitting in the sun, that pressure can be, you know, you can go up to that max, okay? Which of course, your tire will gain pressure uh, on a 90 degree day versus a 50 degree day, which where it will lose pressure just because of the atmospheric change in temperature. Um, however, what happens is when you put that tire pressure at the max, it pushes out on the center. All that pressure pushes it. So, so this center contact, instead of the contact patch being all the way across, it'll be more towards the center of the tire. And uh, because of that, what it'll end up doing is it will not show the, the pronounced wear on the edges, which is the hallmark of a negative camber car in the back. It's going to wear out those inside tires. And again, you got to crawl on your hands and knees. Don't look at your tires in the back and say, oh, they, Mike, they look fine. What are you talking about? Of course, they look fine on the outside. And this is a very low car. All Teslas are low. There's not much room there in the wheel well to stick your head in or anything. You can't really see. you got to get on your hands and knees and look underneath, and you will see what I'm talking about in the rear, especially if you don't rotate your tires, especially on S, especially on X. Now on S and X, especially on, let's talk about X specifically, you've got like six suspension settings. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. You got five. You got five suspension settings. I think on uh, S you have four. I'm not sure. But X, you have the middle one, which is normal. Then you have either high on the high side, which raises you up, or low on the other side, down. And you have very high or very low. Okay, now here's the, um, let's continue with the, um, the rear tire wear issue. <laughs> we'll come back to the suspension height because for the rear tires, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Other than you, I will tell you when you lower the height that you're riding at, let's say you're at, let's say you've got zero camber, okay? And you're straight up and down. Well, when you go to the low height, that's going to adjust your camber like this because the suspension is fixed. It's the suspension arm does not adjust. And when you go to very low, it's going to be really negative camber. Whereas if it's straight up and down, when you go to high, you're going to have positive camber and severe positive. And actually this caused your car to potentially tip over, but that's why on Tesla's, they will knock you out of high or very high. When you get to like 15 miles an hour, you got, you're out of very high. When you get to 25 miles an hour, you're out of high. It doesn't want you to even have that possibility. That's not a factor here, but let's look behind me. All right, this is what you need because on Model S and X especially, You've got the adjustable air suspension. They've got to try to do all things for all people all the time. And by the way, I had a lawsuit going on with an attorney on this with Tesla. Uh, it failed, okay? It was a combination of this and the front drive line vibration, which we'll get to. And if you have any car with, with front drive or all wheel drive, you're gonna to wanna to hear this too in, in the uh, second part of this video. These camber arms, which adjust the camber, either from straight zero, to negative, and by the way, it's always negative from the factory specs on Tesla. Um, guess what? They're fixed. Even if you take it to an alignment shop, they cannot adjust these. And the tow links also are fixed from the factory. Factory parts are fixed here and non-adjustable. This diagram is from Intuitive, and I will tell you, they sell parts here, camber arms that are adjustable and tow link arms that are adjustable. They're, they're saying you can adjust this tow link at the eccentric bolt. They make a, a tow link that you can adjust outside of that as well, I do believe. Uh, you'll have to ask Don about that. But the bottom line is, if you're sick and tired of replacing your rear tires because they keep wearing on the inside, 
over here at the inside edge, you need to get some new parts for your rear, rear suspension. These camber arms, especially, and the toes. Once you adjust camber, you're going to want to adjust the toe too. So I recommend you get them both as a set. Okay. That's what I say. Now, the, the critical thing here is who's going to put these on for you and what are they going to do with the alignment? If the idea is that you want your tires to go straight up and down, and by the way, I'm not talking to your performance-minded people. If you're throwing your car into, into corners all the time, you want that negative camper that's dialed in from Tesla factory. Don't do this, okay? But if you are like me, I'm on. you're on the highway, you're doing a lot of towing, uh, you want a greater contact patch because the, the contact patch at the rear, if you got negative camber, is really on the inside. You're putting so much pressure on the inside of this tire. You may have even had a blowout all of a sudden because... This all of a sudden goes because of all the pressure over time and the fact that all the tread is gone. I basically had some blowouts uh, pretty much uh, that were controlled blowouts. <laughs> oh, and I survived, but I, I recommend you get underneath your Tesla and you check to see what your tire wear is. The only way is to crawl on your hands and knees or get the thing on a lift. All right, so you need to get this if you are like me and you're your average Joe or your average Jane drivers. You're performance-minded, forget it. You don't want to do any of this, okay? Uh, I'm. Uh, there's probably a whole separate video on the you for you in terms of how to make even more negative camber than the factory. When, by, by the way, you can do that with the intuitive parts, but I'm not getting into that here. This is a more practical, uh, I don't know, budget driver, I guess, or just person that doesn't want to have any problems okay that just likes to drive and get from point a to point b without having problems and that's me so also by the way your car will track better if you have more of a contact patch on the on the uh, on the road from uh just going in a straight line by having a uh, your tires uh, zero cambered you are going to feel it, it track better and i definitely do that too so that's another benefit all right so you'll want to replace these you can probably do this yourself, potentially, although I didn't. I usually do a lot of things myself. I did not do this. But what I'd recommend doing is finding a shop, and Don from Intuitive can help you find one that's local, that will not tell you, guess what? We only align cars to the factory specs, because that's what basically everybody does. You go to like a Firestone, I don't know, or a NTB, or whoever else you're talking about. They got all these, you know, attorneys speaking into their ears and they're like, you can't, you got to, you have to stick with the factory specs. Even if somebody comes in with adjustable camera arms and tow links, you got to line up the factory specs. But you know what? If they line up your adjustable camera arms and tow arms to factory specs, it's going to be the same as if you have the non-adjustable ones. All right. And I know the non-adjustable ones will eventually wear and give you more negative over time because that's just what happens as parts wear you're still gonna end up with the same thing here over time. Don't do that. You need Don to hook you up or find somebody to hook you up with a shop that spe specializes in these, in these guys who come in with these tires that are like out to here, okay? They know how to get them totally out of specification, out of spec, okay? That's what you want. You want somebody that's gonna get your specs and your specs should be on the height you're driving, zero camber, okay? If you want the best wear out of your tires, that's what you want. You want them straight up and down, at the height you're driving. Now, for me, that means that we're going to lower it down to either low or very low. Actually, I'm on low because very low is too darn low for me and the ride's too rough. So what you need the shop to do is if you have adjustable suspension. Now, if you're on 3 and y you don't, okay? And by the way, they make these for 3 and y now. This, will, this still will help you. You might be able to get amazing tire wear without even rotating your tires ever by putting these on. Just a giant labor-saving device by having these that are adjustable. As long as you take it to a shop that actually knows how to do the adjustment to the right specifications that you tell them and you confirm. So again, three and Y is no problem because you know, say, hey, like I want zero camber at the back. Just line it up. Three and Y, you're good. You're good to go. But S and X, if you got adjustable air suspension, you have to set it to the, to the height that you want to ride at. Now I recommend, <clears throat> in a perfect world, I would say on X, Model X, which is a large SUV from Tesla, just ride it at normal, you know? And, um, but the problem is that front driveline vibration, you can't have it at normal, you gotta have it in low. So there's actually a feature on the, on the suspension menus where you can check off a box and you can be in low all the time. So that's what I have. Let's say you're riding on very low. You need to take it to a shop who knows how to drop that suspension down to very low. Cause like I said, if you get your alignment on, on let's say normal, 
and you know they have that vibration problem, so you drive on very low. Even if your lineman's zero at normal, by the time you get to low and very low, you're going to be cambered out again and eating up the insides of your rear tires. So what you've got to do, get the adjustable links and arms on your car from Intuitive. Go to the best shop, the right shop, the ones that will do it out of specification, and get them to line it up to zero on the height you're going to drive on, which is probably either low or very low on the adjustable suspension cars. It's got to be down there in that position the whole time when they're aligning it. Make sure you verify. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't do this, especially on your adjustable suspension cars, you're not going to get the results that you're expecting. And you can't blame Don or Intuitive or anybody else, okay, or Elon Musk or whoever you want, okay? They made a car. They just made a car without the adjustability, and they gave these specifications to the aligners, the alignment shops, and those specifications are what they are. They're designed for your generic Joe and Jane performance driver, not for somebody that wants to not eat up their rear tires. Just keep that in mind. So let me know if you have any questions. Please like the video. Give me a thumbs up. We're not over now. This is like the first half of the video is over. Hopefully, if I've explained to you what you got to do, you got to go get these arms changed out. You got to drop your suspension down to where you're going to ride it if it's if it's air adjustable suspension because if it's SRX, I know you're going to want to ride it lower most of the time. And if you ride it up a little bit here and there, you're okay because we, as we mentioned, it has speed limiters on the upper suspension settings. It won't let you ride very fast, so you're probably not going to get in any kind of trouble. And by the way, let's talk about my history. I did this. I did this work about 100,000 miles ago in uh, November of 2020. It's it's now uh, July 2023. I've had these things on the whole time. Now, let me explain. These are intuitive parts. N, number two, I-T-I-V-E, intuitive. Don over intuitive is the guy you want to go to because these parts, I didn't even get the higher end. At the time, I think there were two different, there was, there was like a, a high strength and a super high strength or something. And I'm towing. I'm towing about 5,000 pounds when I do on a double axle trailer, going over bumps, you know, uh, sometimes going off road, ri rising the suspension up. It's been all over the place. I haven't needed an alignment. I've even, I even had somebody sideswipe me. Still don't need an alignment. None of the parts have broken. Uh, I hadn't needed a lot of body work from Tesla, though. And the, the two doors need to be replaced on the driver's side, the Falcon wing door and the driver's uh, front door. So all of that was done. And these parts are still going strong, which is amazing. I don't even know if the original OEM and Tesla non-adjustable arms would have... Uh, worked you know and, and kept themselves in that kind of condition for this long i have no idea but these are great i cannot recommend them enough doing a great job and i'm sure that uh, don's already improved the parts over what i have probably has another generation which is even better let me uh, uh <laughs> let me reflect on that and compare that to my previous experience where i went somewhere else and got another brand of aftermarket parts all the stuff is on my channel and guess what within a few thousand miles they lost their like see how these are these these are not adjustable but the ones that are adjustable you know you you adjust it you turn some things and then you lock it and you assume that it's going to stay like that forever and ever at least for a long 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 time but guess what within a few thousand miles that little mechanism on the on the on the other ones that i bought it kind of loosened up and it just went away and i didn't realize it but my tires had lost they weren't holding anything these camber arms my tires went from Mostly straight up and down to like to like worse than they ever were. And within a couple thousand miles, I ate up the entire, uh, where is it, inside woo, woo, tread on my tires. All gone. And it just, they needed a replacement. I had to go back to Tesla because no one would help me. This was way back when, you know, uh, about three plus years ago, maybe more than that, uh, four years ago. Early Tesla. I mean, I think the, the era now of the early adopter is over, but I was definitely an early adopter. There weren't many aftermarket parts. I was just sick and tired of wearing through rear tires and I was going to be towing. I knew it was going to be worse. But because, yeah, if you got negative rear camber, when you're towing, that's amplified. It's like exponentially worse, the tire wear. Uh, anyway, that's my experience. So go to Don and Intuitive. You have no problems here. And now I'm out of focus and now I'm back in focus. All right, let's go to part two of the video. I don't need to stand to the side anymore. It deals with a front drive line vibration. Now, this is the rear suspension. If this was a front suspension, uh, you would also potentially have, look at this, I am there, a, um, a drive axle that goes from the motor. This assumes you have a motor in the front. 
and it goes uh, sends an axle out. It's a constant velocity joint, uh, which means it can turn in all directions. And this tire on the front axle is turnable. It's got a steer. It's got steering linkage in it, so it has to do everything the rear does. Plus, it steers sometimes at dramatic angles. If you're making like parallel parking and whatnot, it's got to be able to do that. And the drive, the drive axle has to be able to do all that too. The thing is with electric motors. Not so much, not so bad on internal combustion engine cars because they have gears and they're they're constantly changing their torque. It's not always at maximum torque, but electric motors, especially on a powerful non-slow car like a Tesla, they let out a lot of power. So what's happened is these parts are not really ever been designed for pure electric driving, and uh, they cannot handle. They were never designed to handle the kind of stress that these things uh, are are producing. So I'll tell you, over the last few years, Tesla's come out, out with a few revisions here on the drive axle, which you can't see, but it'll be here, that goes in the front uh, on the front axle of the car with the steering axle, the constant velocity joints. They've gotten better and better. Actually, the ones that have now have been on my car for, uh, I think, two years or so at this point in time, about two years, and are doing fine now. But one of the keys is, if you're three and Y and you're fixed suspension, you're probably no problem at all. Probably no problem at all. All right, truly, you may have a problem with the front axle if you're a really aggressive driver and like flooring it while you're turning the wheel and stuff like that, which can destroy any CV joints on any car. But if you're on S and X, especially uh, on X, what you need to do because X is just a uh, same. All right, let me explain a couple of things. Model three is its own platform. It's the small, smaller sedan. Model Y is its own platform. It's the smaller SUV. And that's a wise decision because it's actually it's higher off the ground. So it's got its own platform. That means they made allowances in there for things uh, rather than just jacking up the suspension. Unfortunately, on Model S, because they didn't know if Tesla would survive, it's just one chassis. It started out as a rear drive only chassis and has some stuff in the way on the front. Then they added the all wheel drive motor, which kind of stuff got in the way and they couldn't put it the way they wanted it. So it's kind of at a weird angle sometimes at higher suspension settings. And then X comes along, guess what? They did not make their own platform for Model X. They just jacked up and raised up the Model S platform. And there you have it. That's what I'm riding on. Model X is a jacked up, like think a four wheel drive lift kit platform. So it really raises that up. And with the air suspension and all the different variability in the settings there, those CV joints are way out of specification on Model X. They're somewhat out on Model S from time to time. They're way out on Model X. That's the thing. And these CV joints aren't designed to handle the constant maximum 100% torque of these high-powered electric motors on the Teslas. Does this make sense? If it is, give me a thumbs up. Give me a yes, I understand all this about the CV joints in the comments. Okay, what happens is this means that you really should try to ride on the lowest suspension setting you can given the fact that S and X were originally rear drive only platforms and they didn't even have adjustable air suspension, which raised them up even more. You should try to ride in low or very low all the time. Does that make sense? Anybody, anybody has any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you. But I, hopefully I made it clear that that's the thing is that you just want to ride in low or very low all the time. Now, if you think back to what I said about the rear tire wear, you can see how riding in low or very low is going to present uh, an even worse problem of the existing rear inner tire wear, unless you have these special parts from Intuitive that are going to let you dial in the camber in your rear tires when on low or very low down to zero by an alignment shop that knows what they're doing. So we already did that in the first half of the video. So let's assume that you did do that. All right. Well, this is what you need to do to solve the vibration problem. Now, the way the reason the vibration problem comes into play is because these front CV joints under high power, meaning you're putting your foot down, are going to start to vibrate because they're working out of specification. If the angles are too steep and it's got several sets of ball bearings in there while it's driving the, the, the spinning motion of the electric motor onto a wheel that's not only turning the same way but it's also possibly turning left and right at the same time it's got all kinds of forces and when you start to pull these apart it starts to you know it'll start to vibrate because it's going to blow up eventually if you if you don't stop that 
Okay. <laughs> or you, you need to get a better design part that is more robust and able to handle those kinds of extreme forces. Right now, I think the, the parts still aren't there. They're better. They're in like the third generation. I've had three sets of axles on mine already. Each one was the new one. The ones that are on there now are great, but I will tell you what I've had to do is lock my suspension in low. Like I was saying on Model X, there is a, a, a little selector there where you can check a box off and you'll it'll be in low all the time. And I still, if I'm going to floor it at a traffic light to have fun, you know, just a show off to somebody or whatnot, then I will put it, drop it into very low and then eventually it, it'll reset back to low and raise up a little bit. But low is the, the maximum height you can really do on an X and probably an S too. And that's why you want to get these things for your rear tires because if low is the maximum height that you can do, you uh, are going to need to do something about those rear tires, especially on X where you cannot rotate the rear tires. So hopefully this all makes sense. And as I mentioned earlier, I um, I talked to an attorney in the last few years. We tried to do something with a class action lawsuit. Long story short is it's near, nearly impossible to prove all this was done in a way that, you know, maybe they shouldn't have done. I know Elon Musk has apologized for recognizing that Model X should have been built on its own platform. Uh, he didn't apologize for the fact that Model S was originally a rear drive car and they didn't think they'd stay in business, but they didn't know, you know, they didn't know. They did the best that they can. Now they're like the biggest automaker in the world, but we still have these issues here. And even with the redesigned uh, Model S and X, you know, the when I say redesign, I mean interior redesign. When you went to the new interior, which was instead of the screen being a portrait, it went to landscape, the center screen, you also got new suspension in the back. They also revised and reworked all that. And even the driveline parts, you know, they were updated at that point. That's when the third generation came out for the front driveline, the CV joints, the axle. And that's when I got mine on. They're still, they're still not uh, perfect. Uh, we've looked into this before, and I know that in talking with engineers, an amazing amount of money needs to be invested into uh, new tooling to develop certain types of bearings that can go into these CV joints that are going to be small enough to fit into the packaging that's there on these cars, but robust enough to resist. And it's not what's being produced right now. Eventually, they will have all this stuff, and it'll be a thing of the past. But for right now, you know, when you pay $100,000 for a car and you floor it and it just starts shaking, and you know, that's really annoying. And you know something's wrong, too, and something will break. There's instances of it breaking. If that happened to you, let me know down below. It never happened to me because that vibration is enough to make me back off anything I was trying to do with the car, you know, um, and just say, oh, I don't need to do it. And like I said, and I knew too, I was getting to something. I wasn't sure about the reliability. I wasn't sure when I ordered my car at the end of 2016, you know, what to expect. It was so new. And, you know, I guess it's appropriate now that I'm making this video because the early adopter phase is coming to an end. We pretty much passed through that. It is normal now. Everybody's got their EVs under development or is selling them, even though Tesla is still by far the leader and probably will be going into the future, not, not just for the actual engineering and design of the cars, which is which is great, uh, sans these issues that I'm telling you about, but you recognize how they were, how they came about. They still did the best that they could on all the rest of the car. Um, but these things they had to, you know, you can't do everything perfect, can't do, can't do it all. Uh, three and Y owners really have had most of this not to worry about. And I'd say Model Y in general is damn near perfect. <laughs> okay, because there's been so much engineering and so many iterations back and forth of all this stuff. And of course, it's the best selling car in the world now. All of a sudden, there's no no question as to why. Tesla has learned their lessons as fast as they could on all this stuff. But these these S's and X's will still be on the road for, for many, many years. I mean, their average life of a car from production to junkyard is about 20 years. And these could be even longer, you know, as we see. And please join our, our club, teslahighmileageclub.com. Teslahighmileageclub.com. Join us there. We're talking about stories of anybody with 100,000 miles or more on their Tesla. And there are a lot of them out there. And there are some with just almost no problems at all. It, it would shock you. We're into a new era here. And this kind of stuff that I'm talking to you about is just some of the some of the nitpicky things that we're, we deal with up with our cars. But, you know, the reality is, since I've made the upgrades that I've 
described in this video, all right? Which is the rear suspension parts from Intuitive and keeping the car down low and getting the third generation uh, CV joints up front. I haven't had any problems in the last two years, 100,000 miles, nothing, really. Not with these kind of things. These things are solved. And that's why I guess I had to wait till this long, till this much time had passed before I could make a video like this where I describe to you guys and can say in good conscience, this stuff actually works. This is what you need to do. So if you have an older Tesla, this is what you want to do with it. And, you know, if you're in the high mileage group, Tesla High Mileage Club, uh, give me a thumbs up. I'm going to uh, be dropping this video into the group so you guys can comment. You can comment in the group and you can also comment here on the video. And if there's anything I didn't cover here, something I missed, some kind of facet about this side of the other thing, uh, let me know. But this is just a ray of hope, I guess, because all the older people that had problems and maybe got rid of their vehicles because they didn't like what was going on. Just know that you don't have to worry about this anymore. This is all you have to do. And I still know people, even a Brad, Brad out there who hasn't done anything to his. Okay. He doesn't put that much mileage on his car. He doesn't drive aggressively at all, really. Um, and he has, yeah, he's just, he, he's just more of a, I mean, I'm a grandpa driver, but I will occasionally really, really demand a lot out of my vehicle just for fun. Occasionally, I don't think he even does that. So if you never do that, you may not even know what I'm talking about. There are, there have been people over the last over the years, uh, original Model X owners that I've talked to that have had their had their vehicle for years, even a few years ago, and they're like, "What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about." They don't even notice. But anybody who's really looking for it, you get to notice these things and just know there's a solution. Tag some friends, share this video, give me a thumbs up, please. It really helps with the algorithm and subscribe if you don't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.